Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be with you, creating a space of health and well-being as we traverse an uncertain time in our history. My name is Carla Jane Kennedy from La Trobe University in Australia, Victoria, Melbourne. The aim of my study was to explore how to create compassionate schools that were able to engage constructively with issues of death, dying and bereavement. This is particularly relevant now at a time that we are experiencing a pandemic across the globe. This study has allowed school communities to articulate their current and preferred assumptions of death, dying and bereavement and a framework to be developed that is comprised of the wisdom from participants. Firstly, to position the study in the literature, I focused on school-based research and palliative care research from a Western perspective. The more progressive community-focused ideas resided within palliative care. We wrote a literature review that was published by Pastoral Care and Education and argued for partnership and compassion between schools and palliative care bodies. Specifically, palliative care literature explored death, dying and bereavement as taboo subjects. This is explained by Callagher as a move away from the social grassroots movement of hospice back in the 1960s and a morphing into a more medicalised model where community participation is less. Callagher proposed a complementary relationship between palliative care and health promotion where death, dying and bereavement could be perceived positively and also proactively approached. This Health Promoting Palliative Care, or HPPC partnership, is in theory an excellent concept, but there has been little follow through in regard to practicalities for communities, example training, procedures, policy development, or behavioural change. The gap between the rhetoric of HPPC and the reality of the experiences of many carers is quite stark. It is not immediately obvious how to move from the current situation to empowered, capable and supported communities working alongside health services to enhance end-of-life care. Rosenberg et al. 2015. Moving from this research base to selecting a lens for this work was obvious as social constructionism reveals ways of thinking and behaving. This is relevant when studying community relationships and interactions. Also, the priorities of social constructionism are the strong threads of social justice. Prioritising inclusion and representing marginalised discourse. This provided the argument to harness the voices of bereaved perspectives that are marginalised due to the taboo nature of death, dying and bereavement. So briefly, in laying the foundation with social critical theorists, we were able to focus on silent, or silenced voices of bereaved community members. We looked at the perspectives from Foucault, Marcuse and Habermas and they highlighted power imbalances in schools and the presence of dominant and marginalised discourse. Grounded theory was chosen as the methodology as grounded theorists assert that theories should be grounded in data from people's actions, interactions and processes from the field and then a theory is generated from data collected from individuals. Grounded theory also explores power, as indicated by Charmaz. Grounded theory is taking a critical stance towards actions, organisations and social institutions. After determining the theory and research foundations, we entered the second phase, Intensive interviews were conducted in accordance with grounded theory where themes and categories were identified and analysis occurred while the data was being collected. Critical reflection was used and reflexive questions asked in interviews to unearth participants' assumptions about death, dying and bereavement. All interviewees were bereaved in the last six years and were a member of a primary school community included principals, teachers, parents and students. From all the data I collected and analysed, the following broad categories emerged from all the advice, thoughts and ideas expressed by the participants. They include challenging current cultural perceptions, 
creating a culture of support, creating a grief-informed culture, establishing a culture of reflection and reflexivity, and determining a whole school plan. In each category, represented in these spheres, practical suggestions have emerged from the participants, including the necessity to change behaviour, challenge ways of thinking, and rethinking how to implement procedures. For the purposes of this presentation today, this wisdom is best expressed by tuning into one participant to see how compassion can be ensured and best maintained in his family and school community life through the framework. His thoughts were also reflected by many other participants. Specifically, Jonathan's wife died in an accident and his responses have come from a position as a newly bereaved father to three children. So the first sphere is challenging current cultural perceptions. This sphere highlights that other cultures may approach death, dying and bereavement differently and this helps us look at white Western ways of responding. Let's hear what Jonathan has to say about current celebrations in schools such as Mother's and Father's Day. I think the challenge um, around Mother's and Father's Day or things like that, when you've had a parent that's died or a parent that you don't have, is a big challenge for schools around how they manage that. I think the challenge with Mother's Day or generally is that it's heavily promoted and my kids always get tetchy around that time and we have discussions about it. For schools, it's much better to say, you know, Carer's Day or to kind of work in a way that says how to celebrate the people that care for us uh, would be a much better framework. Jonathan's ideas may push against or disrupt theories of knowledge and the current rules and practices of how the school and community manage celebratory days. The opportunity is there for school communities to take a critical stance, unearth assumptions and explore different ways of thinking or perceiving current processes. Jonathan comes from a white Western culture and his wife's death has prompted new thinking around our celebration of Mother's and Father's Day in primary schools, where children are usually asked to make cards and presents for their mother or father and invite them to school breakfasts or lunches. Like Jonathan, other participants in this study were wanting more thought to go into celebratory days and to prioritise inclusivity. The second sphere, creating a culture of support. Jonathan directs our attention to how children may be experiencing grief. Yeah, even though the kids may not be demonstrating grief in the classroom, it's because they are covering it up. It doesn't mean that within the short term that things are now all fine, but that, you know, stuff still rolls, that every developmental stage, the grief will reawaken in a different way, you know, that at different points it'd be reawakened in terms of what people say and do, and therefore the kids do need a bit of that kind of support. Ongoing support was reiterated by many participants who wanted schools to be proactive in their support over the short and long term. The next slide will also pertain to this second sphere. Jonathan's thoughts are as follows. My son hacked into the school computer and added some files. Um, he got caught out. I got called up to the school and I said I want to talk to my son first. My son came home with me. How are you going, Darcy? Fine, Dad. And I said, hmm, the school called. And he burst into tears and we had a big discussion. Darcy had kept everything internal and wouldn't talk about mum. I wouldn't go anywhere near it. And he suddenly said, I think I'm really missing mum, okay? And do you think this is part of this? So we had quite a big discussion and I said, I'm going to the school now. I'll represent you. It'll be fine. And the teachers were very cross about what had happened. And the principal, but they were also very, very compassionate. And they also thought it was rather impressive. They were enormously compassionate and we talked about it. The teachers listened, they heard it and they understood the link. So they didn't condone what he did, which is fine by me, but they understood that link for at least Darcy. In moving to sphere three, using a social constructions lens and thinking about social justice, it is noted that some people in school communities are the holders of information about grief and bereavement and therefore have more power than others sitting on the margins. It is critical to share this knowledge and therefore power so all members can benefit and feel supported. 
Jonathan explains. Yeah, the school could give out some information around loss and grief so they can become more aware. I also think information to parents around stability for kids is really important. Jonathan alerts us to the need to ask what bereaved people need, not just assume. Yeah, we had the highest concentration of soups and casseroles in Denadown for quite some time. And people were very good. They needed to do something, but you know, I didn't want them to cook for me because trying to feed my kids other food, it was a real challenge for me. They really wanted the food that we would normally cook. The kids were a bit adverse to change. Sphere 4. Establishing a culture of reflection and reflexivity. This means that participants wanted a culture where teachers and principals were willing to look at their own vulnerabilities in the face of grief to then be able to relate to the children or parents in front of them that had been bereaved. This would help normalise grief and bereavement for children when they could see an adult in front of them opening up conversation about various emotions and ways of thinking and behaving. Teachers would need specific training in regard to reflection and reflexivity to support this process. Jonathan reiterates this point. I think any training around emotional awareness is going to help teachers and also being able to process and work through their own grief and loss could possibly help them as well as uh, to talking with others who have lost or been bereaved. So, you know, it's harder to support someone like a teacher, a student or a parent when you haven't processed your own needs around your own grief, but that's a long journey. I guess more teachers that are more emotionally resilient, they're going to make better support for others. The fifth sphere, determining a whole school plan. This sphere incorporates all the other spheres in a practical, grounded way in light of Jonathan's ideas and opinions and in light of other participants. Practically having these ideas solidified in policy would ensure a compassionate response. For instance, giving support over the short term and long term. Supporting teachers in their own processes of grief and how they respond to grieving children and parents or other staff. Considering where death, dying and bereavement conversation belongs in the curriculum, so to normalise these concepts and get away from the taboo nature of death, dying and bereavement. And importantly, having a clear line of communication between parents, students, teachers and principals. I asked Jonathan what he would like principals to know. He began with these thoughts. Uh, what do you put in place to support your students in school when this has happened? What do you put in place for your teachers? Do they have enough information? And you set up that kind of communication pathway, a really clear communication pathway. Clear communication was desirable from all parents in the study and the following model was designed to ensure a compassionate response in the short and long term. In this model, the principal firstly sees the bereaved family and offers short-term support through the school community. The principal, over time, asks what the family needs, example, counselling or particular needs on celebratory days. With discretion and keeping any necessary confidentiality, families' express needs are communicated from the principal to other relevant school individuals or groups. For example, to the parent group fundraising on Father's Day the principal offers support to the school community as well by providing grief information, offering counselling contacts. Secondly, the principal communicates any short-term needs to the teacher. The teacher contacts the family and discusses these short-term needs. Thirdly, the principal communicates with the school counsellor or student wellbeing coordinator to set up regular meetings with the family and teacher to discuss needs and concerns over time. Solidifying this in policy is strongly advised and needs to reflect the ideas contained in this framework. For instance, utilising the clear communication pathway and determining how we manage celebratory days needs to be endorsed in policy and reviewed over time. 
So how else do we meet the needs of Jonathan's family and families like his? How do school communities need to shift and change? Learn about other cultures to be objective about the Western perspective. Acknowledge people's stories. Be open and communicative about death, dying and bereavement in a developmentally empathetic way. Openly allow conversations to be part of the curriculum. Provide advice and information to the community. Discuss celebratory days, their relevance and in light of inclusivity. Revise or develop policy. Include our clear communication model. Be aware of anniversaries and grief reminders for students and families. Offer counselling and practical support to all community members. Listen to bereaved people and offer them time and space by reaching out and asking what is needed without making assumptions about what they might need. Provide access to professional services such as counselling, training and ritual support groups. This would be beneficial for not only those experiencing bereavement, but also for teachers and principals who are tapping into their own grief journeys. This study comprehensively answers how to create compassionate schools in light of death, dying and bereavement. For further information, please draw upon the following references. A special thank you to La Trobe staff for their input. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the conference.